Uh, so have you ever taken one of those internet tests or maybe got a magazine off the shelf to find out, am I going to get married or will I ever be a billionaire? I think there's something innate built deep within all of us that really wants to know who am I and what will I become? The unfortunate part is that along the way to self-discovery, oftentimes other people are left in the wake of our journey to that self-discovery. And unfortunately, this is true even amongst Christians. That's why I want to help you out this morning to help you answer this question. What type of Christian am I? An entitled one or a sacrificial one? Today on Church Door. Hey there, what's up? My name is Ian and welcome back to Church Door. I'm certainly glad that you're taking a little bit of your time to be with us here today. Now there's really two types of people in the world. The ones who know that they owe the world their best and the ones that think the world owes them something. Money, please! Money, please. Now, when it comes to Christians, I'd love to say that we often get this one right because we truly want to think the best of one another, right? Yet, unfortunately, there are many times that we fail miserably in this area. In my early 20s, I was working as a server in a restaurant called Oh, Charlie's. Can I get you gentlemen something more to drink or maybe something to nibble on? Some pizza shooters, shrimp poppers or extreme fajitas. Just coffee. And I got an inside look at just how bad some Christians table manners can really get. Being that I was an outspoken Christian, many of my coworkers would come to me after a shift where they had served other Christians. On multiple occasions, I've been given gospel tracts where a Christian left a tract instead of a tip for the waiter's work. Now listen, one piece of advice. Brothers and sisters, listen, never do this. It's insulting and it is a horrible witness of Christ's love, especially to the people who have not accepted him as savior. And I kid you not, after working there for two years, my order book was overflowing with gospel tracts that other servers had given me. Now, while many Christians were giving soft jabs to my coworkers, some of those were knowingly and some of them unknowingly, there was one specific occasion that I remember. When I came in for a Sunday night shift, a coworker come running to me and says, what does we don't cast our pearls before swine mean? Now, I was a bit taken back by this question. I knew good and well that this was scripture, but I played dumb and I probed a little bit deeper asking, why don't you just tell me a little bit more about the context? They went on to explain that a large group had come in for lunch and it was apparent that they had just came in from church because they were dressed to the nines and their Sunday best. Now this in particular table was super demanding. Not only did they send back multiple plates of food that according to them were not very good, they kept getting aggravated that things weren't delivered to them right away. But not only that, they rounded out their visit by complaining to the manager saying, we won't be leaving a tip today because we do not cast our pearls before swine. In other words, they felt they were entitled to something and we were mere servants that just did not deliver. Now you might think that this is an anomaly, but the truth is it happens more often than we'd like to admit. Maybe it's a Christian getting irritated with a customer service rep on the phone or a Christian blowing up at somebody while they're stuck in traffic. Or another Christian getting mad at someone at church because they sat in their seat. I can't sit here. Believe me, I could go on and on and on with these. But the simple truth is there's probably many of us that struggle internally not to give in to this temptation. What is that temptation? It's the temptation of entitlement. Entitlement! Bruh. Now, like all things, this is nothing new to the Christian story. And Paul addresses this with the church in Corinth in 1 Corinthians 11:17, 17, saying this, 
But in the following instructions, I do not commend you because when you came together, it is not for the better, but for the worse. For in the first place, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you. And I believe it in part, for there must be factions among you in order that those who are genuine among you may be recognized. When you come together, it's not the Lord's supper that you eat. For in eating, each one goes ahead with his own meal. One goes hungry and another gets drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I commend you in this? No, I will not. Here we see a unique glimpse into the early church uh, where brothers and sisters are gathering for what was known as the love feast or agape meal. This was an actual communal meal that was meant to build community and as the title implies, it was to show the love of God and care for each other. Now what would follow this meal is the Eucharist or what many would call communion. It's a sacramental practice that Christians still practice to this day. Now these scriptures paint a really good picture where more well-established Christians were eating to excess during the love feast and other Christians with less stature or resources were going without. And Paul is just saying it shouldn't be this way. Entitlement is not welcome at the Lord's table. Stop it, get some help. As a matter of fact, he then points to the Lord's table, that spiritual meal that followed the agape meal as an example. He reminds the church that the Lord's table defines how Christians should act towards one another. He reminds them at this table we see the Lord's death. And in other words, it's through Christ's sacrifice that we even have a place at this table. You can sit here if you want. The Lord has laid down his life for us, so we should likewise sacrifice for the sake of others. Now when we live entitled lives and we don't put the needs of others above our own, the scripture tells us it comes with dire consequences. Paul then goes on to say at verse 27, whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. If you're a follower of Jesus, this really should challenge you. Paul throws it out there, any Christian who has come to the table in an unworthy manner ultimately brings judgment on themselves. So what is an unworthy manner? Obviously, in this context, it was talking about Christians lording their position of wealth over others. But I also think this principle being taught goes a lot further in application. If we have put ourselves into a position of entitlement in any way, we have entirely missed the grace that has been given to us through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. His sacrifice was not about position, power, status, or seniority, but generosity, grace, mercy, and salvation. Mark 10, 45 puts it in perspective for us by saying this, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. These scriptures ask us to examine ourselves deeper. And I think this is why Jesus asked his disciples to come to the table as often as they can. It's a constant reminder. Am I being entitled or sacrificial in the life that I'm living? Because the picture at this table is clear. We are called to live selflessly towards others, just as Jesus has for us. That's why when we come to the Lord's table here at River Valley, we call our people to go to their brothers and sisters and make things right. If they have a broken relationship with someone, or maybe they have taken advantage of a brother or a sister, or maybe they've dealt with someone selfishly, we do not want them to drink judgment upon themselves, to take of an unworthy manner, so we encourage them to go make things right. 
just like Paul encouraged those in Corinth to make things right before they come to the table of the Lord. Now you may be watching today and you've never given your life to Jesus. You don't even understand what it means to be a child of his, to be welcomed into this table of sacrifice, a sacrifice that was made for you. We have a team of people here today that wants to meet with you, that wants to love on you, that wants to help you take those next steps. You can reach us in the chat box or you can text prayer to the number that you see coming up on the screen right now. Hey, help us promote great Christian content. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that every single time we put out a piece of content, it's gonna come directly to you. Or you can go to rivervalleyrockford.org slash give and make a donation there. Every single penny that comes in goes right back out to help people just like you take their next step with Jesus. We're so glad that you've come to be with us today. Remember, Christ has sacrificed all for you to welcome you to his table. So as we live our lives, let's be sacrificial, not only to our brothers and sisters in Christ, but to our neighbors, our coworkers, and our friends. We look forward to seeing you back next week. Have a blessed week.